God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, maker of marvels, you weave the planet and all its creatures in kinship. Your unifying love is revealed in the interdependence of relationships in the complex world that you have made. Save us from the illusion that humankind is separate and alone. And join us in communion with all inhabitants of the universe. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who topples the dividing walls by the power of your Holy Spirit, and who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first lesson.
abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the theme of creation fair. She approached me about addressing them on behalf of the Gulf Coast Creation Fair organization, and I talked her into letting me do two Sundays, and both times conflicted with the Sunday service. However, even though I wasn't with you, I talked about you and the good work we do at Redeemer for Creation Care. And that's what Father Kim asked me to talk to you about this morning, the work that we do for Creation Care. But I would like to start with a look at one of the themes of our readings this morning because I think that it has a direct bearing on how we've arrived at the good work that we do at Redeemer to protect the earth. It strikes me that the story of the Good Shepherd is a story of true servanthood. And servanthood is a message that I think has been unwavering in my 16 plus years of Roman Catholic education and 40 year immersion in the Episcopal Church. Or at least my faith has developed over these many years into that basic understanding that everything we do must be done with a servant's heart and for the common good. We certainly see that here at Redeemer. In the 14 years that we've been serving meals at McKinney Place, the homeless women's shelter, and the similar amount of time that we have devoted to working with the homeless of Family Promise. Prior to that, and when more of us were a little more able body, we spent considerable time helping with Habitat for Humanity Builds. And now, for over four and a half years, we have provided meals for those who are food insecure, and for those who are not, but who just like a good meal. Most recently, we have welcomed a beautiful community known as the Core Project into our midst. That is all servant work. Our children especially understand servant work. We should be so proud that our kids keep getting recognized for their servant hearts. Cecilia and Brooklyn have been recognized with high honors by the Mobile County Public School Service. Elliot is at cafe every day, every week, helping us. And that is primarily thanks to the support of their parents and their grandparents. But our church provides the support system and the opportunity for many of these efforts. And what an appropriate response to the question from today's reading, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. So when it comes to an understanding of what my response should be to the looming threats of climate change, my instinct, based on my training and based on my people, specifically my church people, is to respond with a servant's heart. And that is the framework within which I operate. And that is part of the story of my community, the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer, and the larger good news story shared by Jesus Christ. So it was without hesitation that I asked fellow parishioners back in 2008 if they were interested in forming a green team at Redeemer. There was a good response from about a dozen people, which is a good number for a church this size, and we formed the Redeemer Environmental Stewardship Team, or REST. The activity level of REST has ebbed and flowed over the years, but the work that we have done influences how we function as a church to this day. I'm remembering many local food festivals that we sponsored, the workshops such as the bird watching class with our dear Smooth, and multiple gardening education sessions, and more enduring influences such as recycling and composting, offering plant-based options at all gatherings where we eat, which is pretty much every gathering, <laughs> and discouraging the use of disposable plates, cups, and utensils, although that has kind of fallen by the wayside with COVID. One of the rest projects that we launched was the community garden behind the parish house. We put in a lot of labor and held a lot of educational events, and a project flourished for a couple of years, 
But then we began to have problems with erosion, which you might expect since the garden was on the side of the hill. And that kind of took the steam out of our fairly inexperienced group of gardeners. We have put it around over the years and tried to arrest the erosion issues, but to no avail until just recently. Thomas Archer has worked out a plan to stop the erosion, and Leroy Cassidy has helped us amend the soil with lots of great compost so that the garden is ready to be put back in operation. And to make it even better, the students of the core project are going to plant, maintain, and hopefully learn from the garden going forward. Today, at the conclusion of this service, we will all process out to the garden to conduct a service of blessing for its continued flourishing. So that is the story of what we have done and what we are currently doing as rest. And if Father Ken will let me come back and do this again another time, I would love to share where I think that we should go in the future with our efforts as a faith-based environmental stewardship team. As a result of these years of effort, I believe that most of us and most people outside of Redeemer would describe our church as an earth care congregation, which incidentally is a designation that we earned a number of years ago from the diocese. I told you that I had been talking to the Presbyterians about creation care for the past couple of weeks. And part of what I shared with them was the story of two churches, two redeemers. I showed them a picture of our beautiful altar all decorated for Christmas one year. And I explained that this is what we call church every Sunday when we go to church. But then I also showed them a picture of a group of redeemer children and adults all loaded up in a boat ready to go participate in the Alabama Coastal Cleanup a couple of years ago. And I explained that this was church too. In fact, the members of the church on the boat, ready to go search through the muck to pick up trash to help keep our mobile bank clean and healthy, was a better example of church than the picture of the altar. Because that joyous group of people heading out to take care of God's creation was the church in the world. It comes down, I get mixed up about paper here. It comes down to how big we want to make our story. Are we working for the common good of our family or our immediate community? Or are we aiming to work for the common good of the larger community and even all of creation? I find the answer to that in how we have behaved and continue to behave as the Church of the Redeemer. And I will share that perspective with anyone who gives me a chance. On this Sunday that we honor God in creation, I am reminded once again of our place in the created order as servants of creation. And I would like to conclude by reading the words of that beautiful collect. God, maker of marvels, you weave the planet and all its creatures in kinship. Your unifying love is revealed in the interdependence of relationships in the complex world you have made. Save us from the illusion that humankind is separate and alone, and join us in communion with all inhabitants of the universe, through Jesus Christ our Redeemer, who topples the dividing walls by the power of your Holy Spirit, and who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Blessed God, whose love calls the whole creation into covenant with you, and who puts in our hands responsibility for the care of the earth and its creatures, we pray for all to whom you have given life and being, saying, Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the well-being of the earth, for its resources of water, air, light, and soil, that they may be tended for the good of all creatures, we pray. Merciful God, give you your land and people in peace. For the waters of the earth, for their careful use and conservation, that we may have the will and the ability to keep them clean and pure, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the mineral and energy resources of the planet, that we may learn sustainable consumption and sound care of the environment from which they come, we pray. Merciful God, for all the animals of the earth, wild and domestic, large and small, especially cute, that they may know the harmony of relationship that sustains all life, we pray. Merciful God, we For the creatures of the earth who do us harm, and those whose place in your creation we do not understand or welcome, that we may see them as beloved creatures of God, we pray. Merciful God, we do remind and be your peace. For all who shape public policies affecting the planet and its creatures, especially Joe, our president, Kay, our governor, Sandy, our mayor, the Congress and courts of this land, as well as all bishops, priests, and deacons, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Russell, our own bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, especially Ken, our celebrant, that they may consider wisely the well-being of all who come after us, we pray. For all those engaged in conversation, in agriculture, in ranching, in aquaculture, in fishing, in mining, in industry, and in forestry and timber harvesting, that health, fruitfulness, and beauty of the natural world may be sustained alongside human activity, we pray. Merciful God, 
we should be quiet and be able to peace. For the creatures and the human beings of your world who are ill or in danger, pain, or special need, especially Josh, Louise, Clark, Mona, Jenny, Nancy, Carol, Casey, Irene, Diane, Linda, Maggie, TK, Nancy, Pearl, Grand Julie, Preston, Larry, Terry, Herbert, and Cindy, Laura and John, Kimberly, Rose, Larry, Bob, Joe, Mark, Lloyd, Charlotte, and Emily, Ben, Sarah, Kim, Ruben, Flora, Jara, Josiah, Helen, Stephen, Bob, Myra families, Myra children, Mark, Madonna, Buster, Ken, and Jana, Barbara. You may add your own petitions at this time. For all who suffer from the unjust, violent, or wasteful use of the Earth's resources, or their devastation by war, that all may one day live in communities of justice and peace, we pray. Merciful God, keep your hand and people in peace. Pray for those celebrating birthdays Laura, Will, Leroy, Mark. For those celebrating anniversaries, Rick and Linda. Pray for the victims of crime, the staff, and those incarcerated in Okaloosa Correctional Institution, Rescue Florida. For those who have died, Janet and Billy. For the gifts of science and technology, and for those who practice these skills, that they may be wise, visionary, and compassionate in your work, we pray. First of all, keep your planning and people in peace. For the creatures and the people of the earth, <clears throat> whose lives and deaths have contributed to the fruitful abundance of this planet, we pray. First of all, keep your planning and people in peace. Gracious God, grant that the people may have in them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, and guide us in the harmony of relationship through loving kindness and the wise use of all that you have given. That you are drawing all things into communion with you and with each other by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin against God and God's creation. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have failed to honor you by rightly claiming our kingship of all of your creatures. We have walked heavily on your earth, but what we use is to waste your resources. Thank you for granting this beauty and honor. And treated as his cabinet was unjustly, holding future generations hostage to our grief. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sin. Renew in us the resolve to keep and consider us over your earth as you desire and intend. With great and compassionate hearts, we are just some rights to show our feet on the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
You may be seated. Thank you for your attention this morning. And thank you for joining in this celebration. Celebration of all of life. And on behalf of all of you, friends who are new with us today, and those of you who have been a part of Redeemer for all these many, many years, on behalf of you, love, thank you for your presentation today. Thank you for your leadership. And most of all, thank you for your passion. We are delighted to be involved in the work that God has given us to do. And that is to serve one another and to serve God's creation. We have guests with us today. I've had a chance to meet most of you, I think, who are visiting for the first time. And um, after church, we will process. Now, there's nothing complicated about that. Maybe I should put it this way. Follow me when we leave today. <laughs> and we will take a few steps outside to that beautiful garden area that um, Lella referred to. And we will have a simple blessing. And pray for God's abundance on that soil. And the seeds that are hiding in the dark recesses just below the surface. And we will give God our thanks. So please join me for that. It won't take long. And then afterwards, we'll have some refreshments. We'll have something to carry us over until we're able to find a real lunch food later on. It also is a time for us to visit. I'm delighted to welcome the children here today. And uh, you bless us. You bless us by your presence. And I welcome you. In just a little while, I'll be bringing the holy bread to you. I know it's a bit awkward these days without the altar. Some of you don't know whether to stand, sit, kneel, and I want you to know that um, you can do all of the above. It might work better if you just remain seated, especially for those who have a difficult time standing. But you choose. There is not a right way or a wrong way. I'll place the bread in your hands, and then when I move on, you may remove your mask and consume that bread. Again, thank you for being here. I think it's probably apparent to all of you when I say, whoever you are, and wherever you find yourself on your spiritual journey, there is a place there for you. This is called the Great Thanksgiving. I encourage you to bring your blessings, your gratitude, and all that you were thankful for to this moment. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Eucharistic prayer this morning is found in the New Zealand Book of Common Prayer. And so, our brothers and sisters throughout New Zealand prayed this particular prayer earlier today. Another example, uniting our hearts to those around the earth. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our right Lord and His grace. It is our duty and our joy to give you thanks and praise, O God, Creator and Sustainer of the universe. We give you thanks for sun and sea and sky, for bush and birds, for phases of the moon, for stars at night and planets in their courses. All you make is very good. For the universe, we praise you. We give you thanks for our creation and our calling, for friendship and community, for love and laughter, tears and pain and growth. For your gift of life, we praise you. We give you thanks for those who went before us, with saints and martyrs, evangelists and prophets, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, from every culture, land and time, we praise you, giving voice to every creature as we join the never-ending hymn. Father in heaven, 
Now let me your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours and now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We, we who are many are one body, but we all share one bread. The cup of blessing for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Bread and wine, the gifts of God, for the people of God. May we share these gifts that are now in Christ and in Christ with us.
join me now as we process to the garden, if you will, follow me. Thank <laughs> you. 